Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl Mitzi, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it. Today, we are thinking about postpartum depression. You know, from all my mamas out there, you know it's real. And for all my upcoming mamas that don't really believe in the hype, honey, come and stop. Think with us because it is a real thing. So thankfully for me, I found a lovely guest, Mama Foxfire, who is going to share her personal experience as well as our, mine, and hopefully all of us who are listening will be thinking about this today. So thank you so much for joining and coming on the show. How are you doing today? Absolutely. I am doing wonderfully and I appreciate so much just what you do. And uh, I think that this is something that I feel like more people should talk about. So I'm I'm really excited to get into it with you today. I know, I know. And you have your own podcast where you talk about mental health and you share these type of links. And I think that's awesome as well, because we need to start breaking this taboo of mental health. You know what I mean? This stigma of you can't talk about it. You can't think about it because as soon as you do, you are crazy for trying to question whatever science in a book told you what your mind should and should not be doing. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It boggles my mind to think that back in the 1800s, we are still going off of that psychology. You know what I'm saying? And (laughs) the type of thinking that was acceptable back then is not now. You know what I mean? We have evolved and changed. And I think it's great that we are able to have this platform so that we can think about this and really question the knowledge that we've been given that's passed down because sometimes that knowledge is just ridiculous, you know, because when I was reading on postpartum depression, it was just like, I'm going to feel all these crazy emotions. Like, oh, this will never happen to me. I'm never going to reject my baby. I'm never going to feel sad. Why would you do that? You know, like you have this stigma of like, basically of neglect, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's just, it's a heavy burden to bear. You know, but for you, if you don't mind, what was it like for you when you were first going through your experience? Like when you realized like, okay, this has to be postpartum. What was it for you? Yeah. So I, so first of all, I have, I have birthed two children (laughs) and with my first one, I really had what I would probably describe as like baby blues. And I want to make it really clear. Like it is, it is normal to have some feelings of sadness, to be a little bit moody, to cry a lot. I mean, that's all that's all within the realm of a typical post baby, uh, experience. And it kind of, with my first child, it came and went, and I was able to just kind of be like, yeah, of course my hormones are crazy. Of course I'm maybe a little bit, you know, mourning the loss of the life that I had before a baby. Cause it's definitely different. Um, oh, yeah. and it didn't get any worse and it went away really quickly after, after I had him. So when I had my youngest, which they're seven years apart. So when I had my youngest, I was experiencing a lot of the same, a lot of, I was sad. I was worried. I was crying. I was moody, but then also I was just exhausted. I was bone tired all the time. And I figured that because I was also caring for three other children and four, if you want to count my husband at the time, (laughs) I was just like, okay, well, of course I'm tired. Like, of course, of course I'm tired. Of course I'm stressed. Of course I've got all this anxiety. So I just kind of powered through it. And at night after the kids would go to bed, I just felt like a total failure. And all this guilt was eating at me. Um, and it, it just wasn't coming easy to me. And of course it didn't come easy to me with the first one either. Um, but this one was particularly harder. (laughs) Um, and fortunately my OBGYN asked all the right questions at one of my follow-ups. So she asked how I was healing and everything, um, how I was doing. And, and then she started asking stuff about not just how my body was healing, but she was like, how's your thinking been like, what, or what are some of the thoughts that you've been having? How, how are you feeling? And major kudos to her because I don't, I know that my doctor, when I had my first never asked those kinds of questions. And when I started telling her, about like the shame that I was feeling and the, the anxiety that I was feeling and the fact that it sometimes would almost border on panic, you know, instead of just, oh, I'm worried that my baby, you know, whatever. It really was like, I, I, my heart rate would increase. Um, and I would just get these like really awful feelings. And if you, if anyone has ever had a panic attack, you know what I'm talking about. It's not normal. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> and like, I couldn't, I couldn't concentrate on anything. I would forget things really easily beyond what I, what I do normally. Like I'll walk into a room all the time and be like, I don't know what I came in here for. That's part of my norm. But it was like, I would forget a lot more, a lot easier. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get to sleep. I was barely eating. Um, and it was just all really, really on the overwhelming side of things. Yeah. Um, and yeah, at that point, whenever I talked to my doctor, I think this was at my, um, this was at my like official, you can go back to work. So that would have been eight weeks. She mm-hmm. said, you know, how long have you been feeling like that? And I was like, I don't know, like a month, maybe three, four weeks. And so she, and I hadn't told anyone about it either. Like I, I hadn't been talking yeah. to anybody. Yeah. Like you, like you were talking about, you just, we're, we're, we were taught. It is a lot better now. I will say it is so much better now, but when I was growing up and at that time, this was in 2013, I, I was brought up not to really talk about stuff that was going wrong. Like you present the good yeah. <laughs> in your life and not necessarily the bad. Um, exactly. So yeah, I was, I was really fortunate that she asked all the right questions. And when she brought up postpartum depression, I was like, no, 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 that's not me. I don't don't have postpartum depression because I hadn't had any feelings of, um, not loving my baby. I was, I was totally enamored with my baby. I hadn't had any feelings of like, um, kind of the, oh, what was it's like the heavy side you know what I mean it's like there's no equal medium when it comes to postpartum either you hate your baby and don't want nothing to do with it or you either love your baby you can't be anything in between yeah that's the nice thing about postpartum is that they're real they're showing like no everything in between still counts because Mm -hmm. when I had my baby my first one I was kind of like you like you said like I felt the emotions it was in and out but it meant it was nothing because it was manageable but I love how you said that you kept on giving reasons to for for everything you know what I mean for your yeah. tiredness for the stress exactly. you know what I mean so you put it all together because let's be honest we're women that's what we do you yeah. know what I mean we give reason because there's no there's no reason for us not to be tough you know what I mean there's no yeah. reason for us to not pound our chest silently you know what I'm saying like we got this so I totally understand what you're saying because that's how it was too mm-hmm. but for 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 me I was always taught that sometimes health health people people who work in the health field can sabotage you you know what I mean and they can they can label you and you will forever have this stigma and once you Mm -hmm. have that label or diagnosis on your record then you're you're low-key fucked you know what I'm saying and I've seen it happen and I've worked in the healthcare field for almost 11 years in multiple areas of the spectrum so I've seen it happen and I know it's a real thing so Mm -hmm. for me when I go through those questions because I ask you that now because I just had my two sons just two like this year and last year and I ask those questions about health but I I ace those questions because I'm gonna tell you I'm fine I'm fine I'm fine but in the back of my mind I'm like no I am tired I am exhausted I am overwhelmed. I am stressed Mm -hmm. out. I just want to cry when I don't have my baby. I just want to cry when I do have my baby. I just want to cry. I just want to cry. I just want to cry. Oh my goodness. For me, it was the tears. It was so hard. And it's like, I have a little one right there watching me. And it's like, I can't cry because you know what I mean? You're teaching them to cry. So it's just like, it's so stressful. Like postpartum, it does. It happens differently for every woman out there. Mm -hmm. So any women that are listening and they're tuning in, I'm pre- pretty sure you have some of them that where you're like, yes, that's so me. And other one's like, mm, <laughs> is it going to be like that for me? Because, you know, it is going to be different for every woman, you know, but I think it's the fact that we're trying to let you know that it's okay. You know what I mean? It's okay to, to feel that way, you know, and because it wasn't, if it wasn't because of things that I seen online that was positive, I probably would still be in depression mode right now. I mean, what was it for you? I mean, was it really the doctor? Were they able to help you with medicine or were yeah. you able to find a different outlet? So whenever I was expressing all this to her and she was like, girl, you do, you do have postpartum depression. Stop trying to argue with me. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, she explained like, it's way more common than you think. And if your family, if you have family members, obviously you're, you're a child of someone. So if you've had family members, I'll bet you at least one of your family members has been there too. 
and they want to know what you're going through. So first of all, she encouraged me to talk to people to say like, Hey, and uh, I talked to my mom first and uh, she was immediately supportive. And I, I'd been hiding everything from everybody. Like I said, you didn't talk about it. So when I started yeah. talking to my mom about it, she was super supportive. And when I started talking to like coworkers who have kids, it, it amazed me how many people were like, oh yeah, I've been there totally. But yeah. no one talks about it <laughs> until, until you bring it up. No one's going to talk about it. Um, but yeah, she prescribed me an, um, antidepressant that was compatible with breastfeeding. Cause that was important to me at the time. Um, and it helped within like a week. And I wow. went back to her after that and I gave her just the biggest hug. I mean, it, cause it felt like such a pressure was just lifted off of my chest. Yeah. And I know that part of that is that the anxiety was lessened, but it was also just the feeling of all of a sudden being supported and knowing that I was supported, but the, yeah. the, um, medication helped me tremendously. Now I will say this is not postpartum depression related, but I also now have, um, chronic depressive disorder and medication has not touched that. So mm -hmm. <laughs> if you, if you have either struggled with depression before and you've taken medication and it didn't help, or you, um, you know, you're not sure if you want to take medication, especially with postpartum depression, I feel like there are things that you should try, even if you've tried them before, if, if your doctor recommends them, obviously <laughs> don't just go try everything. Um, but yeah, the, for me, it was the medication that helped immediately. And yeah. it was, it was incredible, but more than the medication, I really think that it was the talking to other people yeah. and just being able to hear other people say, oh, I was there. I was, I was right there with you, you know, and it's, um, it really made me feel a lot less alone and less isolated and a lot more supported. Oh, hold on. My cat has my, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <kidding. laughs> uh, even whenever, I, you know, even if they weren't doing anything for me, even just to hear someone say, I, I experienced the same thing. I got through it. You're going to get through it. Let me know if you need anything. Even if I didn't have anything to ask for, it was just the kind of, um, that outlet. community. Yeah, yeah. That, that supportive community that if I had kept hiding everything from everyone, I yeah. never would have, I never would have found out how many people were actually supportive. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's the reason why I like this outlet is because if you Google postpartum depression, our conversation will come up and you can hear two women experiencing it mm -hmm. and you can realize, you know, it's okay. Because let's be honest, there's not a lot of women that have outlets, you know, they don't have a yeah. good relationship with their parents, you know, yeah. or they don't have any family members. They don't have a job because maybe their search circumstance mm -hmm. or maybe they have a job but they don't feel comfortable because it's around certain people that they know they can't talk to and they can hear what real women speak about this real issue mm -hmm. and realize you know what it is normal it's going to be okay i will see the light at the end of this tunnel because it's a season you know what i mean yeah. people need to realize it's a season and despite the fact that you said you have chronic depressive disorder i just want to say that it's nice to know that even someone that got diagnosed with that big label, you are stay, still able to be functional for your children, for your family, yeah. for yourself, and still keep going. You know what I mean? Because I applaud you because that's difficult. You know what I mean? That's that's a difficult thing to live with. And nobody will ever be able to know what, why and what haunts you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because only you know. And anybody who's listening because... If you if you're going through postpartum depression or if you're just going through any type of depression, you know your demons come and haunt you. You know, mm -hmm. you know you feel the words just keep coming down and down. It's like a wave just rushing you, and all you do is just just getting hit back to back. Like you've ever been to a wave pool? That's how it feels. Yes. Like it's it's <laughs> intense. And if you can find that outlet, I mean, it's a great thing to have community because. Honestly, this is my community. Me doing these podcasts, me talking to people, that's how I get over my depression and my my situations because it makes me realize like I can keep going. You know, if so and so did it, then I can do it. You know what I mean? There is a light at the end of time. There is, it is the way that I'm thinking because sometimes sometimes I sabotage myself. Mm -hmm. And when you go through this postpartum depression, you kind of really have to take a second. Like, are you sabotaging yourself right now? Are you really a bad mom? 
Like, really? Are you really a bad mom? Like, no, no, you're not. You're not. You're just a stressed mom. You're just a tired mom. You're just an exhausted mom. But you're still a mom. And that that's all that your children need. You know what I mean? You you give your children the best that you can of yourself because this is the time that you have you know and I think that's the beauty of just life is when you realize like you only have this time then you make it count you know and it's 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 very difficult sometimes when you're in that dark cloud to see that tunnel but like you have to like keep meditating on those words or just saying them and repeating and repeating them and then eventually you realize like you know what I am a bad bitch you know (laughs) that's right (laughs) yeah and I mean if if anybody is out there struggling and you just had a baby like I know it's listen I have had my share of awful experiences with hospital staff, awful experiences with doctors. I think we as women probably all have, like I, I, I don't think I've ever talked to a single woman, uh, who has said like, no, all of my experience with, with doctors have been a plus. Yeah. It's great just, experience. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I know that it can be really scary to admit whenever you are having a problem, especially if you're at like an eight week appointment, like I was where you're hoping to get. So the other thing, the other thing was, uh, you know, I was at this eight week appointment. I didn't have maternity leave. I didn't have disability. I didn't have anything. I was not, I was having to bank on my time off and go negative into my time off. So while I was at that appointment, my focus was on, you need to release me back to work <laughs> Yeah. so that, I, so that I can, I can get back to work and I can start making the money that my family needs to survive. Right. So yeah. I understand that there are a lot of things that you might be in that doctor's appointment and you might be like, shit, no, I have to go back to work. I've got to get released. She didn't hold me back anymore from going back to work. She worked with me to find something that helped me. And if you are experiencing a doctor who is not willing to work with you, who is not willing to help you, I highly, highly encourage you if possible to get another doctor, get a second opinion, get, yeah. go find someone who will listen because yes, it's normal to have some mood swings whenever you've just had a baby. Of course, your body, your hormones, everything are trying to get back to where they were before. They're all like, oh crap. I just, I just shot a baby out of my vagina. I, basically. I know and, people don't yeah. realize it's a tough job, you know, like <laughs> it, it is. It's just really happen tough. naturally. I mean, it does, yeah. but my goodness, it's, it takes a lot. Like people don't realize like, it does. When, you get, when you have, <laughs> when you get pregnant it literally changes you I never understood that concept yes. because you know I never had kids you know until I had kids mm-hmm. <laughs> so I used to look at women like what are you talking about but once I got well, pregnant it was just like I don't feel like myself yeah you know what I mean you don't you don't feel like yourself and then the fact that your health is on the line because for my second child my health was on the line I had a really bad mm-hmm. pregnancy and I think it's because it just happened back to back and I didn't allow my body to recover because my children are literally 20 days apart. 20 oh, days wow. apart. Yeah, <laughs> 20 days apart. They're going to be the same age for a whole 20 days. And it's mm-hmm. it's crazy to me. But it's like during that year, during those nine months, it it it, it ruined me. Yeah. It, I shut the whole world off. You didn't hear. You look up Mitzi when the last time she posted. Yeah, never. Because I mean, <laughs> because it's been so long because mm-hmm. it's just, it, it takes a toll on you. And it does. if I can do it, if you can do it, we can do it. Then the whoever's listening, they can do it too, because it literally is a fog. But once it goes, yeah. honey, it, it, it goes, you know, it's yeah. season. Every have a season and every time in our life for happiness, for sadness, for struggles, for blessings, you know, for so many occurrences. And it's just, I think we get caught up in a season for too long. You know, when you're having good yeah. things come your way, you're like, oh, I want to keep it. You know, and that's why we miss our, when our babies are so tiny, because it's like, oh, you're so good. Yay. And then when they get to the toddlers, it's like, oh my God, hurry it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, just, it's crazy to know that as, as, alone we feel like we're going through this because I'm pretty sure you felt like days where it's like I can't believe I'm doing this this is I feel so alone like you literally feel so alone so isolated like you have no community and especially like you said you didn't tell anybody because I didn't tell anybody my sisters would see it in my face because if I talked all I did was just cry oh I could just I could feel it because I I could just remember the feelings and oh my goodness Mm -hmm. it's a lot 
And well, it's, it's a just lot. a lot of, it's a lot of shame and a lot of guilt for me. It, it was, it was, there was so much, I was ashamed to admit because I felt like that meant I was failing. Yes. And, and it's That's not important. like, it's a, it's a, it's a condition that is treatable. And I was holding it inside because I thought it was just me being a, a bad mom. Yeah. And it wasn't, I mean, it was something that was absolutely treatable and easily, easily treatable. <laughs> Exactly. And I think that's the nice thing about how mental health is transitioning in that outlet where you can Mm -hmm. see that there's more mental health facilities being um, built and being more accessible as they're trying to treat it as if it's emergency care for your physical Mm -hmm. body. And I think that's what people need to understand. It is that serious. You know what I mean? If your body's bleeding out, what's the difference if your mind is bleeding out? You know what I mean? It's the same concept because when you're going through something so tragic, it, if that's how it feels, you know what I mean? If you feel like you're dying, you feel like you're unoperational, you know, and everything around you is literally forcing you to keep going. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it forces you to keep going and keep going where you realize like, if you look back, you realize like, you know what? I did it. Yeah. I did it. You know, and that right there, when you're able to look back and just realize like, I did it. That's the greatest thing. Because my grandmother, she's a social worker and she is in New York City and she had to make a visit to this one lady. And she said that she had to actually call CPS because mm-hmm. her po- after she gave birth, she was, oh, my grandmother went through the questions and asked her what was going on and like, how are you feeling? And she bluntly said, sometimes I feel like I want to throw my baby out the window. And my grandmother mm-hmm. says she lives on a 16th floor building oh my gosh on the 14th floor and she was just like i i i, I had to call cps on that usually mm-hmm. i wouldn't usually we'll find therapy and get her help and treatment with with pills and things like that but then she's just like i was so scared i was like yeah. that's that's an intense moment like yeah. what would you do you know what i mean if you were a social worker and you came into that position like that's a that's a real thing you know right. that's a real thing that other way, real women are out there contemplating like letting their children go because of mm-hmm. that and it's crazy because back then they used to allow you to drop children off at the fire department mm-hmm. and you, you can, can abandon you yeah, still can, you still can. Yes, I, yes. I thought that they, i thought that was no mm-hmm. longer a thing nope fire departments police stations hospitals they all have something that's called a um a safe space or a safe place or something like that and it is a um official drop-off point where you can surrender your child if you feel you are a danger to them or they are in danger yes wow well thank you for that knowledge yeah that truly, yeah, so- that truly makes you think about things you know yeah. like i mean if a if a woman is at that point i mean that's better to surrender and give them another mm-hmm. opportunity right. versus to kill them because how yeah. many times have you heard women like um drive off of bridges mm-hmm. or burn up the house you know what i mean like goodness like you hear so many tragic stories like i keep hearing stories of women leaving their one-year-old two-year-old baby at home alone while they go party Mm -hmm. like goodness yeah yeah is your postpartum that bad and if it is honey seek some help i'm not here to we're not here to judge you we're here to let you know it's okay to seek help versus letting a child that's defenseless fend for themselves yeah you know because then there's a there's a difference between like baby blues is considered fairly normal, right? That's a pretty light level of you're a new mom. Things aren't how they used to be. It's hard. It's true. It's hard. When you're a new mom, it's hard. Everything, (laughs) everything is hard. It's hard to shower. It's hard. It's hard to go to the bathroom. It's hard to sleep. All of it. And then there's postpartum (laughs) depression, which is taking it that next step of like, are you having panic attacks? Are you having extreme sadness, extreme mood swings? And then there's that next level of postpartum psychosis. And that is where you get into the thoughts of harming your child and the um, delusions, sometimes hallucinations also with that. And so there's, there's all these different levels. And I don't know that it's like, if you don't treat one, does it cause the other one? I don't know that I'm not a doctor. I am not a professional. I have no idea, but there are different levels of it. And no matter what level you're at, if it's baby blues, if it's postpartum depression, postpartum psychosis work with your medical providers and work with the people around you and let them know what's going on. Because even if it is something like you're having thoughts of harming your baby, what if that woman that your grandmother went to see had called her own mom and been like, mom, I am struggling. I am having these thoughts. And maybe 
her mom or a friend doesn't have to be a mom. If you don't have a good relationship with your mom, a friend or, or a social worker, and just let them know what is going on so that the people around you can help you. Um, but no matter which one, which category you fall under, yeah. it's always okay to, to admit it. And it's always okay to seek out some help. Exactly. I think that's great advice. And I, I think this has been such a great conversation. Very, very good information for everybody to really think about and to consider, especially for our mamas out there that, let's be honest, it's hard for us. We have to wear that Superman cape, no matter what time, day, night, 24, 7, 365, we've got that cape on. But when it comes to our mental health, we really have to remember you know, there's resources. So I thank you for talking about those resources and how transparent you were telling your story and telling your own experience because you didn't have to come on my show. You didn't have to talk about this. We could have talked about anything else in the world, you know, but we decided to speak about this so that the world can really think about this because it is a taboo. You know, it's a taboo that needs to be broken and needs to be given some light upon, you know? And I think- once we start evolving and start spreading the word and spreading the awareness, more women would come up and, and mm-hmm. show up and, and acknowledge the fact that, you know what, I need to take care of me so that I can be successful for, for my next, you know, for my baby, you know, and I think that's an amazing thing. And I know you already gave us so much great advice, really a lot of great advice, but what can be some lasting words that you can leave my audience off with to keep on thinking? So probably my favorite thing to say, and I'll explain it a little bit, is that the only normal people are the ones that you don't know very well. And the reason that I say that is that everyone on the outside looks really normal, right? If you look at me, you think, oh, sure, she's a single mom, but it looks like she's got it all together. I struggle, (laughs) okay? And I'm very open about my struggles, but not everyone is. So just because you look at someone, maybe it's on Facebook or Instagram or even in person, Just because you look at someone and think, wow, they look like they've really got it together. You don't know their story. You don't know what they're struggling with. So keep in mind that other people are going through shit too. And just because you can't see it doesn't make it less valid. Um, And also try not to compare yourself too much to other people because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they've been through. And maybe you really don't want to be in their shoes sometimes. Yes. Oh my goodness. Believe me. I always say that because- what if you were given the opportunity to walk in somebody else's shoes and you realize what that person actually has to endure, then you're going to have a better appreciation, but it's a lesson that you never had to learn. You chose it because you chose to live in envy. So try not to live in envy. That's an amazing statement. I love overall everything that you said, because you're right. Stop comparing, you know, seek out help. You know, those are the core things. And I, I thank you so much for coming on my show. You were really a great a great, great person to have and to share your perspective. I'm really happy that I had this time with you. And ladies and gentlemen, if you really want to know more, because, you know, earlier I did talk about her own podcast. It's really pretty cool. She has it worded out for you. It's pretty awesome. So go check it out on YouTube or or I have her link directly on my website under her beautiful photo. Just just click under Mama Foxfire and it'll redirect her to those sites and you can find more and reach out. If you really liked Mama Foxfire's vibe and what she was spitting out and you think you can relate to her or if you feel comfortable, you know, don't, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. You know, she seems very sincere and I'll vouch for her or you can reach out to whatever you want. <laughs> do what you do. Do what you do. But always, always keep moving on.